Joss Whedon is a writer, director, musician, producer, and a figure of almost cult-like admiration. He's probably best known for Buffy the Vampire Slayer and the Avengers movie. And he's got a new project, which is a natural outgrowth of those two, Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. Mr. Whedon is here with us today. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I will bring Signor Benedict and the Lady Beatrice into a mountain of affection. You're known actually mostly as a writer. Why take on Shakespeare where you don't actually have control over the material? Well, I don't know many writers who don't revere his works. I grew up listening to them, reading them, um, seeing them, and uh, you know, it's been a passion of mine for a long time. I had friends come over to the house to read the plays, and um, you know, it's, it's exciting to be able to have my time, my turn at interpreting his work. As I recall, you shot this in your own home, like on the contractually, on the, on the break you were contractually obliged to have after shooting the Avengers. Actually, I shot it in my own home on the break that I fought tooth and nail to get from the Avengers, which was officially one week. What I needed to do was get back to the roots of creativity and reconnect with the central passion of what first attracted us to this business. You're kind of known for your strong female characters. But there's an interesting creative tension there because often the females in your uh, creations, they meet really ugly ends. Is there a, a disconnect there? When you're known for creating a small female character, um, people like to sort of put that in a box and say that's what you're going to do. What I like to do is create human characters. I've killed off characters, male and female, willy-nilly. Uh, I have a bit of a reputation for it, one that I'm quite tired of, to be truthful. But the fact of the matter is, if I'm not putting people through the paces, if I'm not giving them real pain and real loss and real hardship and sometimes real tragedy, then I'm not a storyteller. You are the son of a TV writer and I think the grandson of a TV writer. Mm -hmm. So were family get-togethers, were they like, okay, I'm not sure you've quite found the comic sweet spot yet for that joke? Or I mean, was it a lot of the discussion of the business? No, you know, it, it really wasn't. What it really was was my dad and his comedy writer friends uh, all milling about till all hours, just being incredibly funny and me just sort of hanging out with them waiting for the day that, you know, I would make them laugh. And you know, every time you did, you scored a little hit, you're just like, yeah, that's right, I'm in the tribe. <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer was kind of seminal in that it was kind of big before vampires were big. And it was kind of big before we had such strong female action heroes. Do you think it fed into that or were you sensing it in the zeitgeist? I had a need to see um, a girl fight monsters and not die. I had a need to see um, somebody's high school journey writ large. Vampires um, are a wonderful metaphor because they're the other, you know, the sort of monstrous, isolated creature but um, that we all can relate to, especially when we're in high school, but they happen to be the most beautiful, sexy, perfect, usually sort of vaguely wealthy and well-dressed version. It's not, you know, we're not up there with our hunchbacks ringing the bells. You know, we're not in the- Zombie yeah, back Exactly, mm -hmm. uh, Phantom of the Opera. It's like, no, vampires are, you know, are Frank Langella. That's who does it for you, Frank I'm sorry, Langella. Honestly, Frank Langella's Dracula is still the hottest vampire on record. Why has the culture, do you think, become interested in superheroes for so long? It, it seems like it hasn't gone away, even though it used to be considered a kind of a small boy thing. Well, those small boys grew up and, um, you know, and they had other small boys that they showed their comics to and um, all of them buy things or are running studios or are filmmakers. Um, you know, for a long time, people would sort of poke at the edges of comic books, but they either didn't have the money, they didn't have the technology, or they didn't have the understanding of what it was they were trying to adapt. Um, I think that really changed with Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, which was the first movie that absolutely got the essence of the book and turned it into a film. Will it, like other things, reach its end? Are we close to that? It felt to me when I saw The Dark Knight that, uh, you know, it was like sort of we'd gone past it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's sort of like, okay, we understand the superhero movies now, I'm going to make Godfather with superheroes and, and sort of, it's the, the post-superhero era. And I was like, well, wait, wait a minute, I, I, I still want to see the hero part. Um, you know, I feel like the great superhero movies have yet to be made. Um, and so let's not deconstruct them completely just yet. When I asked our readers to, you know, what they would ask, one of the interesting things that kept coming up is your atheism. And I wondered if the fact that you do not 
believe in the supernatural makes you more able to imagine these universes because you're working with a blank canvas. Since I don't have um, a fantastical belief uh, in my life, it is nice to create a world where there could be one. Um, so I think it, it helps fuel my love of science fiction and fantasy, but I wouldn't say that it makes me particularly qualified to do it. I have questions from readers. Wilson Vega asks, in retrospect, is Fox cancelling Firefly the best thing that ever happened to your career? No. No, Wilson. <laughs> no, it's a terrible thing. It hurts like a wound every single day. But it did free you up to do other things? It did... No, 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 boo. <laughs> okay. So you've done Shakespeare, you've done horror, you've done superhero. Is there a genre that you are, are you dying to do a rom com? And I know some of the work crosses over, but yeah, I mean, you know, I I just did a rom com, um, and I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I did in fact the rom com. But um, do you consider that the rom com? Even I do. More I think I think that it's Taming a, of the Shrew. Or? Oh, much more. I think Much Ado is really the the um, you know the granddaddy of all rom modern romantic comedy. You know, I would love to do a, 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 a straight up period drama, you know, with some empire dresses and, you know, some swords and, and, and manners and stuff like that. British know. actors. Probably <laughs> British. Probably they'd be British. On that note, Mr. Whedon, thanks very much. Thank you.